afternoon. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, and I'm here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. And this week I have the pleasure of speaking to Kave Azar. He is the President, CEO, and Founder of Advanced Thermal Solutions. Hello, Kave. How are you? Hello, Rich. It's a pleasure to be here on your show. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Advanced Thermal Solutions has an expertise in an area that people often take for granted. And uh, with the name of the company, I generally don't have to describe that. Um, many of your customers are coming to you after they've already designed their product, and I assume that that is a problem. Uh, is that typically what happens, and why don't they think about thermal issues at the beginning of the design? Uh, Rich, I think your question is right on. Uh, unfortunately, it does happen very often, and uh, it stems from the nature of the thermal management electronics in general. When you look at the electronics company, uh, the net product is the electronics uh, box, electronics gear. And uh, of, oftentimes, the thermal management is, is a second thought or afterthought, and a lot of managers are hoping that it's going to go away by itself. The product is put together, they do the testing, and it fails. And then they call companies like us, primarily us, of course, and, and uh, we jump in to try to uh, uh, fix it for them. Uh, I wish that they would give it a little bit of higher priority, especially if the companies are on the fast track and, and, and uh, little established uh, in the market tend to do this more often. The companies who have been around the block a few times, they, they dedicate more resources to it. And uh, still there are a lot of shortcuts. They, a lot of people still feel that they can solve the problem with a couple of software simulations, and, uh, and uh, get it resolved, but the problem is much more complicated than that. I was amused by your statement of they hope the problem will go away on its own. I'm guessing that that never happens. It never happens. Uh, we, we, cannot, we cannot fight the laws of thermodynamics. They're there. They're here to stay, and, and uh, unless you change the system configuration as far as functionality is concerned and put less traffic or less demand on the system, the, the thermal issues just get, uh, perpetually gets worse. And I'm guessing with the push for higher performance computing, smaller spaces, the problem just gets worse and worse, right? It, do, it does get worse and worse, and, and, and uh, you know, there, is, there is a need for some really fantastic innovation on the material side, in particular material science side, to come up with, material, with uh, products and materials that can handle these kinds of power. As long as we're staying, staying with the traditional uh, packaging type of technologies and so forth, this problem is going to get perpetually worse. Okay. So you've been in this business quite some time. I won't even mention how long. But um, what's the biggest change you've seen with, with respect to thermal issues in your time? Uh, as, as I've talked about this before in the past, is uh, you know there are a lot of researchers, a lot of engineers that are doing some excellent work and coming up with a lot of a lot of innovative uh, products and solutions and so forth. The market continuously develops things, but uh, it is very difficult to put your finger on one item. But there is a process that has been drawing our attention for a number of years now, especially post-2009 uh, or so. And it's a very, very strong push for standardization. Uh, and uh, the reason, obviously, is very clear behind it. Uh, if I produce products in a larger volume and it's a standard, the cost is going to come down. This go kind of goes back to what I was talking about before, that people are hoping that the process is going to go away, the problem is going to go away. But the standardization across the industry seems like to be one of the highest uh, uh, advantage and also threats. Because if the engineers just go based on the standardization and the packaging and the thermal management side and don't do anything with electronics, the problem that we're talking about earlier is going to continue to surface, meaning higher power in, in a very, very awkward packaging that is not designed to accommodate and cool those devices. Is it fair to say that standardization would slow down innovation in what you do? Not, not in companies like ours. Uh, you know, we, we focus on our, our, our research and, and development and, and coming up with innovative products in the package that the market is using. But for companies who are, who are gravitating towards that area, the answer is absolutely yes. The notion is uh, the, the buyers uh, in, in, in a lot of companies, they, they, they set the uh, suppliers and say you have to go with these. and Engineers have to design things within those packages, and that's where the problem starts. Uh, the, the, these two have to work together hand in hand, meaning that the circuit design and the concept design has to be understood within the package that uh, the uh, 
buying agents are asking us to, uh, to purchase and put the packages in. When there's a disharmony okay. between those two, the, uh, the, the just asking for problems and, and thermal issues that we see left and right. Makes sense. So do you see anything revolutionary on the horizon, or is this more of an evolutionary thing where we'll, we'll see incremental improvements over time? Well, uh, the, the, the majority, the bulk of the industry is going to be evolutionary, meaning uh, uh, a lot of the stuff is going to be incremental changes that are happening. But there are companies and researchers uh, that are doing some, some edgy stuff, and a lot of it has to rely, rely upon material science. As long as we're dealing with the same standard materials that we've had all, all, around, all, all along, uh, the change is going to be incremental. But uh, as we develop new materials, uh, especially in thermoelectric coolers, in uh, uh, materials for, content, for carrying the heat away, it's going to make some, some uh, revolutionary changes at some point. So is, is developing new materials within the space of advanced thermal solutions, or is that something that uh, your customers do and you just figure out how to cool them? No, it, it, we are not a material science company. We are, we are a thermal management company and, and mechanical packaging. We look at the cooling solutions and, and, uh, and uh, uh, come up with, with solutions like quad flow and dual flow uh, CPU coolers. That is, that's an air-cooled application that's significantly better than liquid cooling by a factor of 25-30%, which is huge. Uh, but uh, the, a lot of these material science research comes from universities and some of the a larger corporations who have a real need to do this, and they allocate the resources. And those corporations are getting smaller and smaller in numbers. Um, and um, that's the unfortunate fact that people are not dedicating required resources to these to do these projects and, and come up with these materials that are required. Okay, very good. Um, I'm afraid we're out of time. Uh, we've used up our five minutes. That was Kaveh Azar, and he is the president, CEO, and founder of, of Advanced Thermal Solutions, and I am Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Rich. Uh, pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. You're welcome.